Hi, this is Jody from mcpactions.com. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to use layer masks in versions up through CS4. The first thing we're going to work on today is I'm going to show you how you can add a layer mask manually to your photo. You can't add a layer mask to the background. You need to actually have a copy of your background. And to do that, you can hit Control or Command J. And there's your background layer copied as layer one. Now the next thing we need to do is obviously you wouldn't add a mask unless you made a change to your picture. So let's go ahead and use one of the adjustments that you would need to do on a pixel layer. For example, we could use the sponge, burn, or dodge tool, or we could come in and we could use one of the healing tools. Any of those are things that you'd need to be using on pixels. So we're gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and use the sponge tool. The sponge tool saturate your image. And let's go ahead and we're just going to go ahead and saturate back here a little bit and back here a little bit. And I'm purposely hitting her hair where I wouldn't want to. And I'm going to hit, let's hit her outfit a little bit too. Now let's say we've gone a little bit too far with saturating with the sponge tool. And I want to be able to take a little bit of my saturation out. That is where masking would come into play. To add a mask to a pixel layer, there is a square with a circle inside. And this is your add layer mask icon. You will go ahead and click that icon and it will add a white mask to your picture. White means it's revealing or showing. Black means it's hiding or concealing. To hide a change, we go ahead and select our brush tool. Make sure your brush is set to normal and the opacity will vary depending what you're doing if you want to take the whole change out or just a little bit. Now you're going to want your brush set to black so we can hide some of this change. To do that, you can click the X key and it will swap these, or you can click this air, double arrow and it will swap. Either way is fine, X key or the double arrow to swap those colors so black is your foreground. Then you're going to go ahead and you'll see there's a box around your mask. That means your mask is selected. So we can come in and if we have it at 100% and we paint, you'll see what this does. It will take in our entire change where we added the saturation away. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that real quick. And you can see how I'm taking it away. Now, say I wanted to add it back. Say I liked it. I changed my mind and I liked it. We would click our X again or click the double arrows here and we can paint the change right back in. And we can paint it just where we want it. Now, let's say we want part of the change. That's where the opacity slider comes into play up at the top with the brush tool, you change the opacity and you can go down as low or as high as you want, up to 100%. I'm gonna put it at 30% right now. And I'm going to hide a little bit of what we've done. So you can see on the mask right here, we've got white. So it's revealing that color. Let's say we wanna dim it a little bit. So if I click on this, it's going to take 30% of it out. And again over here. So you can see it's a little bit more subtle now the color. So that's how you can add a layer mask and then paint with the layer mask. You can use the same thing if you make changes to the skin. For example, if you take out a shadow under the eyes, um, if you do any type of blemish work and you want to add a little bit of it back, you can add a mask and then paint and hide a little bit of your change. Okay, hopefully that helped you and we're going to move on now to adjustment layers. CS3 and below, what you will do is you'll go to the little circle in your layers palette and then you'll go into hue saturation. And when you pull up your hue saturation, in CS4 it's actually going to come up in your adjustment panel. In older versions it'll come up as a pop-up box. And this is the same in CS4. What you will do is you would come in here and you can pick your master channel or you can pick what color you want to enhance, be it cyans or blues for example. I'm going to go ahead and just use the master on this since there's not a lot of other color. And I can come in here and increase the saturation up quite a bit. And then I can also play with my lightness. So I can make the picture darker, or actually I can lighten it up and make it more vibrant. And I can also change the hue a little bit. I can make it a little bit more towards the dark blues, or a little bit more turquoise um, green. So I'm going to go ahead and go right with it a little bit. Now, when you're done in CS3 and below, there's an OK button you will click. When you're done in CS4, you actually have to use this back arrow to get out of it. Now you'll see there's a mask here, and all you would do, again, just like before, you would use black to conceal the color. So let's say we didn't like what happened 
since we did this on the master, we saturated everywhere. Let's say we didn't like what happened back here. We can take our brush up to 100% opacity and just mask it back on that wall over here, anywhere we didn't like the change. Let's say we like it on the water, but we didn't like it on this wall. You would just come in and literally paint, and that will take it away, because remember, black conceals, black hides the change. So we could come in here, and I'm going to actually make this change more severe. And I would never do this normally in real life, so you can really see the, what the painting did. And you can see how it didn't affect over here because we've hidden it with our black. Okay, next step. One more picture we're going to work on today. We are going to work on this picture right here, and I'm going to show you how to do this fully in CS4. What you can do is you need to have your adjustment panel up. So you'd come under here, under Window, and you click off Adjustments. And you can see your adjustment panel right here. I'm going to actually make it a little bit bigger using this little folder icon. And now you can see all your adjustments that you're allowed to do. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Curves right here. And I'm going to actually brighten this picture up a little bit. And then I'm going to actually click the arrow to get out of it. And we're going to leave that alone. I like what it did. It's great. But let's go ahead and do another curve. And this time we're going to go ahead and we're going to darken up the background of the picture. So I'm going to actually pull down in the middle and you'll see how the background got darker, but so did my daughter. We don't like that part. So with CS4, you can always go in earlier versions or in this version and paint on the mask directly. But we can also come in here where it says mask and we can click invert, which is control I if you're in an older version. But we have an option to invert it. And now you'll see the mask is black. It hid our change. We can come in here now with our paintbrush set to white. So I click those arrows to set it to white and we can reveal the black. I probably don't want to do this at 100% because it may look too extreme. So I'm going to go ahead and put the opacity down to about 35%, 30-35%. And I'm going to come in here and start painting on the picture. And you'll see I'm painting on the background and it slowly gets darker. And if I let go of my mouse and I paint a second time, it will get darker yet. So we can come in here and really darken up the background. And let me show you what we did. We went from that to that. But you can see she's not affected at all because we didn't paint on her. We only painted on the background around the edges. So you can get a nice natural vignette that way. So again, white revealed on that mask, black concealed on that mask. If you're wanting to see where you painted, there is a line, it's right above my Enter key on my keyboard. It's also got the backslash key. If you click that, it will show you exactly where you painted and where you didn't. So I didn't paint anywhere that's red. And all the areas that aren't red, you can see, are where I painted. So I can click that again to get out of it, the same key. And that's how you use layer masking. Hopefully that was useful for you. And again, once you've masked out, I should point out one more thing. Once you've masked things out, you can actually come in and play with your layer a little bit more and make things more or less extreme. And they'll only affect the areas that you've turned white. And white, again, is what reveals and black conceals. So you can see we have a lot of control over what happens in this picture this way. And last tip is when I'm using masking, I always start out with the um, softest brush. So I always use an airbrush soft round. The size, I change my brush size with the bracket keys. But in terms, so it doesn't matter which size I pick here. But in terms of when you get close to a person and you're masking with extreme color or extreme light or dark, you probably will want to increase the hardness if you start to get a little bit of a halo. I usually keep it at zero to start out. And if I notice I'm having trouble because it's um, very, very contrasty or very, very a lot of color, then I'll go ahead and increase up the hardness of this brush to between 30 and 50%. And then I always remember to bring it down again at the end. So remember, you can change the hardness. You can change the opacity of your brush. And, of course, you can go back and forth if you have overspill between black and white. Black hides, white shows. Hope that helped you and enjoy my videos. Please come back to mcpactions.com slash blog for more videos. Thank you.